All right, so here's some more Rogneist philosophy. So this is really fascinating because to me, Rogneist is one of the most fascinating humans who ever lived, even though he's only ever been a talker. He's just a, a, a guy who talks on camera, basically, but he is a cultural uh, icon, right? Uh, Rogneist is, is uh, an interesting story because the one half of his culture club, the one half of his one half of his fan, and then uh, was so different than the other. So you had the martial artist side of Rogneist, right? Uh, as Rogneist was a martial artist, but Rogneist was also a guy who used DMT and got into uh, flotation tanks. But Rogneist was a very physically strong man and very dedicated martial artist who balanced his life well so that he wouldn't be toppled by what DMT showed him, right? Whereas a lot of the weak bourgeois were guys who never trained in their life uh, ever. Like ne they're really weak. Hitting the, like I'm talking about like the, the skinny, uh, jealous, uh, uh, hippie guy who never trained in a day in his life, who never even uh, worked a day in his life, who just sells marijuana and smokes DMT all day. That guy uh, is also a Rogneist fan because of DMT, right? So you have a split. Like Joe Rogan is a is Ekis Treaty and Shotokan Krambit uh, embodiment entirely because he, half of him is a martial artist and half of him is a, a DMT user, right? He's able to balance in between because of his martial arts, his dedication to physical training, right? And mental training. He got a black belt in BJJ, he likely already know. He's likely already trained plenty of Shotokan karate uh, in the past year and a half or so. Uh, he's already, you know, he was already a black belt in Taekwondo, known for his uh, hard kicks and stuff. And he's built like a, a, a brick shit house. He's yoked, you, you know, like he's a very well built, stocky guy. Uh, so that's really funny to me how his culture club is divided down the line. You have. Some in-betweeners like him, though very rare to find a Rogneist who can balance both worlds so well. But you have guys uh, radical of either side who are his fan. Like you have a more straight-edge jujitsu guy who maybe uh, is uh, a guy more sober, like only drinks beer maybe once in a while, but is a devout BJJ guy who also enjoys listening to Rogan. And then on the other side, you have uh, a guy who never trained, covered in tattoos and gauges, or, or sorry, covered in tattoos with gauges in his ears and, and piercings in his face, who loves smoking DMT and is a Rogan fan for that reason. Uh, but though, and how there's a, a clash, basically, when you, the, the further out you go on either side, as far as like how radically... Or are they on the side of, of Shotokan Krambit? How radically are they on this side of Ekis Treaty? Ekis Treaty being <laughs> the weak bourgeois loser side who smokes DMT and never had a real job. They just sell marijuana and is a fan of Rogan. And then you have the guy who, who never sold drugs, who was like a devo uh, just a, a devoted BJJ guy, right? No tattoos, you know, like maybe drank beer once in a while. Who also likes Rogan? And... That guy on the other side, uh, the weak guy who smokes the drugs, he starves out and shames that other guy in masses. Like the weak group together and they they shame the, de the dedicated martial artist, right? The guy who's not a drug user and loser, right? So that is what's – that is really fascinating to me with when breaking down Rogue Neist, the man and the philosophy, right? As I said before, Rogneist philosophy is the idea. He's so open-minded that he that Rogneist he doesn't he's not sold on the idea because Rogneist is never sold, right? But Rogne <laughs> Rogneist um, isn't a blind or ignorant to the idea that God might be trying to kill us, meaning that G Rogneist goes as far into his atheism as saying. Like it, it might not be that God just doesn't exist. God might be a shame player 
who's trying, who's using pesticide right now to get rid of us or fungicide. As Rogneus earlier said, he said, what if we were just a fungus growing on something? That's what Joe said earlier on in his career. And that's the idea that we would be, it would go beyond that, that it's meaningless. It means, no, it is real. We're ants in somebody's pantry and all the wars, AIDS, disease, fighting, death, tragedy that we're experiencing here is just Advion ant gel, but we can't perceive it as such. Like it, we're just that to that big, uh, pest control guy that is God. We are a two year phasing out when to us, it's a 2000 year phasing out. Does that make sense? So that's what's so fascinating to me is the the divide between dedicated martial artists and dedicated doper and how the dedicated dopers group together to get the dedicated martial artist canceled, right? Because that's the weaker side of men who all of their faith – see, those guys were sold entirely on DMT, right? Whereas the other guy was sold entirely on martial arts. Rogneist was sold somewhere in between, right? A lot of these hippies might appropriate some martial arts, like they do some goofy Tai Chi shit, even their own ver uh, renditions of Shotokan coming up now, probably, uh, because, or, you know, or, or already, but they're not, they didn't do their time in real Shotokan Kumite line, and they definitely didn't do their time in BJJ line. You know what I mean? Uh, you can't do BJJ when you got this. Now, these guys are a little different. These aren't typical weak bourgeois hippies. Um, the, these guys are different. So this is people in San Francisco uh, who – this is a man named Derek and this is David. So Derek cut his own penis off uh, on camera in the dark web for uh, money. He did in the dark web because he had like a five inch penis that he believed was not good enough to get women. And it was like a, it was sort of an average size penis. Like people would say, ah, like you don't have a micro penis, dude. Like it could be worse. But he was convinced it wasn't big enough. And he watched a lot of porn, took a lot of drugs. And his he took things like meth to uh, amphetamines that made his cock even weaker, basically. And he ended up got getting bad Peyronie scarring and he decided he was going to hack it off. And so he hacked it off. This guy, based on Komoto Arcabaniel, who did that, this this in reverse, right? He first, he got the jaw implant and then later cut his dick off. But this guy got a jaw, uh, got, got cut his dick off and then got a jaw implant, gauged his ears, got some tattoos and joined a group in the Bay Area that was encouraging others to join their trans movement the same way, right? This was the guy who was fucking him up the ass. This guy uh, also had a jaw implant, but he had a penile implant, right? And anybody, so they, they favored those who had, so some of the guys chose to be anal patients. Some of these guys chose to get an implant. So this is the, the mixed up, confused culture you have that is the porno Bay left in San Francisco. This is their trans war. Make no mistake about it. It is uh, – and people are going to say, oh, you're mean, you're whatever, you're – you know. Uh, that's uh, what those people are encouraging you to do in San Francisco is to chop off your penis, uh, to humiliate yourself in the dark web because they push the size matters agenda so much that all the average size – these guys encourage average size dudes to either get an implant – or cut their penis off, basically, because it's average size, not porno standard, because their Bible is uh, the Johnny Darko archive, you know.